Happy sunshine, family. Lunacy's back. And even though it says part two on the screen, it's really part three. I'm going to fix that right now. All righty. <clears throat> well, this is uh, the third installment in the transcript series as Heather is uh, declaring to the court hmm, what their true legal status appears to be that she has uh, verified uh, proof of that on record with the court and the court uh, has yet to show proof of their authorization their authority to even hold these proceedings <clears throat> so let's head on over to page 32 and I just closed out the last video with Heather's last paragraph here on page 31 lines 20 through 24 so I think that's a good place to pick it up I'm saying yes we can move forward yes we can have court we can have different systems but we are not answering to a banking entity into the banking families that's what I'm saying it's slavery via monetary instruments and that's the fraud that was stopped. <clears throat> Judge Shirley says, and I guess the long and the short of it is simply just because you say it's so doesn't make it so. Well, and, and she gets cut off by the judge. And that's true with everybody. Heather says, everyone, yes. That's true with everybody. Actually, it's not a question. That's true with everybody. He just repeats himself. Heather says, however, and the judge cuts her off. In other words, if I were to issue a declaration saying that, you know, you owed me some money and you didn't, quote, rebut it within the time I said it, doesn't it mean you owe it to me? Heather says, well, if you gave me a notice that I owed it to you, I would actually absolutely rebut it. Because if I don't owe it to you, I don't owe it to you. Judge says, but if you didn't, you'd still owe it to me. And Heather cuts him off. Well, if you gave me notice of it, judge cuts her off. So if I just made it up out of whole cloth and I just said, quote, you owe me a million dollars, end quote. And for some reason you didn't rebut it, suddenly you owe me a million dollars, even though Heather says that would never happen. Judge continues, there was no basis for the debt. Heather says that would never happen, I would rebut it. But if you didn't, I wouldn't. I would, I would rebut it. Suppose you just blew it off. I wouldn't. I would rebut it. Or if anybody did. If I wrote it to Miss Falto and she blew it off. Heather says, I'm not responsible for Miss Falto. She has to be responsible for her own things. Again, I like how Heather's bringing in responsibility. C. Clifford continues, What I'm trying to show you is the fallacy of that argument. <clears throat> Heather replies, the fallacy of the argument is actually not telling anyone what their actual positions are legally. Okay, replies the judge. Heather says, as far as the legal status, their legal identity, and everything else. C. Clifford chimes up, well, I'm trying to do, and Heather cuts him off, She's responsible for her own debt, but if you send it to me, I'm absolutely canceling it because it's not true. Let's see, says the judge. Heather says, may I ask for clarification, please? Judge replies, I have no idea. I'm just trying to do my job, and my job 
Heather cuts him off. That's what I'm asking. Judge continues, which may not exist in your mind anyway, but for everybody else in the world, my job is to rule on motions that are filed in front of me. Again, he's, well, he's, he's talking about his job description, and I wonder if other people are seeing how this word adjacent to all of this is redefining the praesepe as a motion. Anyways, and the way I, and I understand every judge does that, is to read the motion to see what the allegations are, to see what the supporting law is, and to see what the other side says in response to it, and then make a decision. That's what we do. We do it day in, day out. Every judge in this country has been doing it for hundreds of years. And again, he is narrowing this down to just motions. This is a precipe. And all I'm trying to do is go through that same process with you by asking you, what is the basis for these various arguments? Again, Heather's not arguing, she's declaring. All these subtle attempts to redefine what this position is. This is a huge verbal tug of war going on. And I'm really impressed with Heather knowing exactly where the firm ground is. I've highlighted them, continues the judge. I've read everything you filed, and I can't get you to stay with me on that. So he's basically saying, I've got a cookie cutter algorithm that I put all my cases through, and we've already talked about He's at the end of his career, and why would he want to change that for maybe his last case? He's telling her, I'm trying to do that same process with you. <clears throat> I can't get you to stay with me on that. And that's because his process is to get Heather to make statements <clears throat> that basically give the court jurisdiction over her. And she's not doing that. And she's being very clear about that. Heather says, well, I have clarification for you. Judge says, okay. Which possibly might help here, continues Heather. Okay, says the judge. Okay. Yes, ma'am, says the judge. <clears throat> Heather says, there is a contrite ignorance from the moment that we go to law school as far as what the law is. A true bill, for instance, can only be issued by the original issuer. So, for instance, there is an ignorance not just within this court, but within the whole entire legal industry, everywhere, that someone else can actually charge me or do a true bill against me. So no one, says the judge, or anybody, says Heather. Excuse me, says the judge. Let me see if I understand that, because I've never heard that law. It's not law, says Heather. It's a matter of fact as far as what paperwork goes from this courtroom through the clerk's office. Judge says, no, no, no. You said no one can issue a true bill against you except who? Yourself? Heather says, it's like someone trying to write a check for me, signing my name, only they don't sign my name. They try to get my signature in another way. That's what the fingerprinting and the photo IDing is in the courthouse. We actually, at the highest level of banking trade and finance, we actually have to have all that documentation. If you send us a judgment, a conviction, without having the thumbprinting and the, or fingerprinting and the photo ID along with the indictment, there is no charge. I'm talking from a banking level. No matter what happens here today, and the only thing I'm going to be able to do is be able to accept all of your statements as proof of ignorance. And I will state that with all due respect, 
it is contrived. It is designed to have that ignorance be present. Okay, so, says the judge, Heather continues over the top of him. However, at the banking level, this is what this is all about. Right now, every minute that we discussed, because mind you, with a precipe, there is no, it is not a subject to discussion or merit. It is just entered. And then later on, if they come back and they have proof, <clears throat> because right now the record is void, completely void of any sworn documentation, validation, and verification that the United States, the alleged plaintiff, exists. There is proof that it doesn't exist, but there is no proof that it does exist. So unless you guys come forward with your proof of authority, authorization, and jurisdiction dated from March 2013 onward, there is none. Wow, here's an interesting question from the judge. Do you accept the United States Constitution? Heather says the Constitution used to exist. It was actually canceled within the foreclosure. Oh, wow. Wow, I think, I think this question from the judge was was another question that if Heather answers yes, possibly this gives him jurisdiction. And this is just a very interesting answer that the Constitution of the United States was actually canceled within the foreclosure. Wow. And that a constitution is actually a contract. That's interesting. And no, I've never been a signatory to that contract. Wow, that's pretty clear. However, when I was a licensed BARD attorney, before I was made aware of it, yes, I did swear to uphold the Constitution. However, it's a contract. I'm not a signatory to it. Are you? <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. What a great, great question. Judge says, so if I... I'm trying to figure out. You keep saying you haven't given me any authorization. You haven't given me any documentation. If my support for my position was the United States Constitution and duly ratified laws of the United States Congress, would that be sufficient? Oh, wow. Wow, what an interesting question. Heather says, no. It would have to come from the Attorney General, who is Jeff Sessions at the moment, okay? He would have to validate and verify that the United States Constitution is lawful. And the judge says, and would you accept that if he did? Would you accept that the United States Constitution is law? Heather says, if I had sworn verification and validation, right, says the judge, with his signature and seal. What's a seal, asks Judge Shirley. His seal, it would be his signature and then his biometric seal. What's a biometric seal, asks the judge. For every single, what's a biometric? Biometric seal is a biometric identification similar to the fingerprints. So he has to put his fingerprint on there, asks the judge. That's a biometric seal. It's the same ones that the U.S. Marshals required, same ones you required. Judge says, no, ma'am, I don't. <laughs> wow. Because what I'm asking is, you know, for 16 years, people have been going to prison. I've been making rulings. I'm, Heather says, I know. Judge continues, doing a trial right now. My fingerprint doesn't exist on any of those. Neither does any judges. So in your mind, Heather says, actually, didn't you do fingerprinting when you took your bar card? 
I don't put them on my orders, replies the judge. No, but you did it for your bar card, right? Well, replies the judge, somebody probably took my fingerprints at some point. No, I don't think I ever did anything for a bar. Heather says, you didn't do any fingerprinting whatsoever for background checks or anything like that in order to take the bench? <clears throat> Judge says, I don't. Oh, to take the bench was different. Yeah. Okay, says Heather. So that's part of the United States Corporation when it legally existed <clears throat> and as it functioned. Everyone is required to give their thumbprints. I know for the FBI, when I became a prosecutor for the United States, judge cuts her off. That's not my point. You said Jeff Sessions would have to send something with his fingerprint on it. Yeah, says Heather. <clears throat> I don't have Jeff Sessions, his biometric seal. Either that or he could be personally here and swear. Judge cuts him off. Do you understand there is nothing other than your claim that says anybody has to file anything with their fingerprint on it? You're the only person who claims that. Heather says, actually, that's what judge cuts her off. And I realize we're all, I understand that we're all contrived ignorant, but there is nothing that says that's the law, that that's required, or that any of that has to be done except you. You just write it repeatedly, and then in your mind, it becomes the law. Heather says, no. Actually, it is inside of every single position that you take. When you do a background check, you have to provide your fingerprints. I didn't ask that. You said for him to file something that has his fingerprint, his biometric seal would have to be on it. Heather says, well then he can give me the one that he supposedly gave to the United States Corporation when he took his position. But that is, his, but that is a seal. And everyone here has required, I don't know how many times I was required, which I gave without prejudice and under duress, my fingerprints, was to check me into every single hotel that the U.S. Marshals put me through on that 30-day tour. So I'm not asking for anything that isn't actually asked for. In fact, now, even in banking, you have to go in. It's all a matter of banking. It's not a matter of law. It has never been. It's all a matter of banking. But you do actually fulfill those requirements. You just stated you did when you took the bench. Judge says, are you aware that the district courts like this one have original jurisdiction over all criminal offenses against the laws of the United States by statute? Heather says, when was that statute made and entered? I don't know. 18 U.S.C. 3231. I'm sure you're aware of that having gone to law school, right? Heather replies, when was that actually entered? My point is, unless it's dated after March 13th, excuse me, March 18th, 2013, along with a newly issued constitution and everything, I know they've already tried to reincorporate all of our people at BIS. I'm not quite sure what that stands for. They've tried to reincorporate the corporation, but they could not. So C. Clifford says, so your position is that even though that's been the law of the land since the founding of the country, if it hasn't been redone since you filed your financing statement, it's no good. It's not good law. The district courts do not have original jurisdiction over all the criminal offenses against the United States. Heather says, well, the court never had original jurisdiction. Or the United States is only a 10 square mile if you've been to D.C. And then, as far as branching out, 
that's where the fraud has occurred, under the old statutes. I'm saying that as this point, excuse me, I'm saying that at this point, the federal corporation does not exist. I have not received any sworn documentation rebutting any of that to prove that it does exist. And you know, we're all having a conversation here, but none of it actually counts, only because we still have not received the authority, sworn declaration, sworn documentation, verified and validated by you or Anne-Marie Svalta or Cynthia Davidson stating your authority and jurisdiction. So therefore, we're just having a conversation here. I'm more than willing to accept this, and if you accept documentation that you would like me to review and decide whether to accept or reject, and Judge cuts her off, but it has been, Heather says, but I don't have any. Judge says, it has been provided to you. That's the point. <clears throat> when was it provided? Because I have not received any. I don't know. Has elbow counsel for Randy Bean received any? Because maybe I'm just missing it. Yeah, you did. It's cited in their brief, and it's in the statute. Heather says, which none of those statutes, none of those codes actually exist. They were part of the old corporation offered under the guise of government. That's what I'm saying. It was provided to you. Here it is. Here's the law that everybody in this United States operates under, and it tells you that the district courts of the United States shall have a original jurisdiction, and you say that's just not right. Heather replies, no, because these belong to the federal corporation, which was closed. And I do not have any documentation that the federal corporation that there is another federal corporation <clears throat> because the other one was terminated and foreclosed. So unless you show me where the United States actually exists with the legal documentation of a legal entity, these codes mean nothing. In fact, they're only just proof of collusion at this point. Wow. Wow, that's potent right there. I don't know why it doesn't highlight at all. It's weird. So unless you show me where the United States actually exists with the legal documentation of a legal entity, these codes mean nothing. In fact, they're only just proof of collusion at this point. Yeah. Okay, replies the judge. We have proof of collusion, continues Heather. <clears throat> And at the same time for me, while, thank you very much, it may be proof of collusion, I believe it's a matter of, and I say this with all due respect, you guys, because I was in the same spot till I worked with DOJ, <clears throat> with those in DOJ, in the FBI, U.S. Marshals, World Bank, Federal Reserve, and everybody else this is a banking structure. It's a corporate structure for a reason. Okay, says the judge. Or it was. <clears throat> that was what was terminated and closed. I am. Have you... Are you in receipt of the Declaration of Statement of Assets? That's document 55. Judge replies, is that the one where you claim some people in this court system, maybe me included, owe you 46 quintillion? Heather replies, oh, I see where the, no, this is not you directly. Oh, good, replies the judge. Or to anyone here, says Heather. Good, replies the judge. This is the amount <clears throat> that is running, and actually since... 901. It's been doubled and compounded. Uh, September 2001, is that what I'm reading as 901? I'm not quite sure. The judge continues. So, like, we're up to 92 quintillion? I probably don't have that. <clears throat> well, 
replies Heather, this has to do with the Federal Reserve Bank for international. The judge cuts her off. They probably don't have that. Heather says, they don't. They're, ty- they're trying to create it like mad. That's what September 15th was about. I'm going to have to dig into what she's referring to here. Well, let's move on a second. <clears throat> as long as you are noticed that this is existing, you've received it, continues Heather. Has Anne Marie? Judge cuts her off. I just tell you to be careful. I just tell you to be careful about some of your filings, and Mr. Lloyd can advise you of that, that, you know, there's other statutes that obviously you will not agree exist, but unfortunately the rest of the country in this court and the prosecution, prosecutors, and the marshals, and ultimately the Bureau of Prisons will deem exist. That make it a crime to file certain things against judges. Wow. Heather says, oh, she gets cut off. Judge continues, false filings. So just, all I'm saying is just be careful. Wow. That's a pretty, pretty interesting warning. I think Heather knows exactly what she's doing here. Heather says, well, I just want to make a clarification for everyone's peace of mind, but also for the record, these are not liens against anybody in this courthouse, in this room at all, or in, in your personal positions at all. These are actually going towards the entities that are committing the fraud that have not gone into actually explaining any of this to you, but literally that you are, the judge cuts her off. All right, so if I understand, I'm trying to put all of this together and figure it out. One of the problems I have is you're claiming that none of these laws really exist. Authority doesn't exist in either the courts or the statutes, but the whole basis for your claim <clears throat> is based on the legal authority of the UCC. Heather says, my legal authority is I'm here, I'm existing, I'm proving and have proved and giving you documentation that I exist. Judge says, the claim that you foreclosed on the United States. Heather says, well, that's aside from this moment. Right now, I gave you actual documentation. The record is void of any kind of documentation provided by any of you stating your identification, your authority, your authorization to actually be present to to the United States. Judge says, we've heard that. We've heard that repeatedly. You don't have to say it again. It's in the record, okay? I'll give it to you. (laughs) Uh, Heather says, well, I do have to say it. Can I have it? Do you have it for me? It's my... It's my question that's on the table. Is the genesis of your basis that the UCC exists... Is the genesis of your basis, so your foundation, that the UCC exists? Heather says, no, the UCC was closed. Well, this is interesting. Judge says, UCC was closed? Heather replies, it was terminated on March 18th, 2013, when the Department of Justice, the Secretary of State, the U.S. Treasury, and other international equivalents, the judge cuts her off, so your, Heather continues, could not rebut. Everything was accepted, duly accepted, and that is the other filings that were included in the Declaration of Facts. It was all terminated, including the United States Code, including the United States of America as a corporation operating under the guise of government. All right, says the judge. That's the one that was closed, just so you know, says Heather. A judge continues, so the UCC filing you made, 
Do I understand that you think that the foreclosed on things like the Federal Reserve Bank and the United States? Probably means, do I understand that you think that you foreclosed on things like the Federal Reserve Bank in the United States? Is that right? I'm not quite sure that 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 makes sense to me. Heather replies, I know it removed them as custodians. <clears throat> they were left as facilitators so that everything could be repurposed. However, we had a number of people going in and doing their own agendas at that point and created a vacuum. So the judge cuts her off. But you, you've said they were foreclosed on. Heather says they were all duly, legally, and lawfully foreclosed upon using the same exact procedures that are used all over the United States. Wow. Look at that. They were all duly, legally, and lawfully foreclosed upon using the same exact procedures that are used all over the United States. Wow. Okay, says Judge Shirley. And so who owns the Federal Reserve Bank now? The Federal Reserve Bank has been inside of BIS the entire time. I think this is Bureau for International Settlements is, is what I'm kind of remembering right now. Inside what? Heather says the bank, the Federal, Federal Reserve Bank? Yeah, did you say DIS? It's called Bank for International Settlements. Okay, there it is. It's the Bank for International Settlements. BIS, says the judge. Yeah, BIS, says Heather. And where is the Bank for International Settlements? Excuse me? Where is the Bank for International Settlements? Who is that? Okay, I think that's a good place to uh, pause for now. Quite an interesting response from uh, the first two videos in this series. Uh, a lot of positive energy out there and uh, a lot of views uh, in a short period of time. And uh, got emails flowing in and a lot, of, a lot of interesting comments in the comment section. So thank you so much. I love you guys, and I just want to ask Grace and all of you to hold a high vibration and to shine light for Heather and everybody else involved with this case in Tennessee on all sides of the matter. It's, it's quite an ordeal to... <laughs> to watch unfold and the brighter it is the more peaceful it is uh, the more peaceful it's going to unwind for all of us we've all got a stake in this this is this is about who the world is going to be going forward and those that are waking up to new awarenesses those that are on the train of ascension, those are the ones waking up to who they truly are. And part of the spiritual journey is having the courage to speak your truth. And this is no easy conversation that's going on in the courtroom in Eastern District of Tennessee right now for for either side. But it's a crucial conversation to have. You know, when you make observations that you can't unsee, when you make observations throughout your career that show you the true nature of the courts, well, it puts you in in a spiritual crisis, I would imagine. 
Are you going to shut your heart down, shut your soul down, and become a zombie cog in the system and allow your silence to be complicity? Or are you going to speak up? This doesn't mean that we all have to speak our truth in the courtroom in the midst of such an experience. But if any of these court proceedings have brought you observations that you can't unsee and you've come to a place of knowing, just start with your open-minded friends. Start with your family. The only thing we have are our relationships. And we use those relationships to communicate that we do not consent to the way this fraudulent, under the guise of government power structure has modified our lives and the environment around us. I do not consent. And if you don't consent, put a comment down below and let the system start seeing just exactly how many people see the light and how many people are connected with their voices. <clears throat> you know, in the last episode I talked about Ideas that just fly into my head from out of nowhere. And one day, inside my head, I saw the word violence and the letters jumbled around into two words lean, like. You know, a bank lien, a lien on your property, L-I-E-N. And the other one was V-O-C-E, voce. And voce, voce is voice. If somebody's got a lien on your voice, that's ultimately what the roots of violence are. People have to be allowed to know themselves. The system, the environment we live in, the environment we're moving towards is one of allowance. <coughs> we allow ourselves to be, we allow ourselves to know ourselves, and then we allow ourselves to have the courage to speak our truth. Connecting us with our voices? That's how we unwind violence. I love you guys. Peace out.